Hey everybody, this is Peggy. Welcome back to the channel. I have a new um, walkthrough for you guys today. I'm going to show you guys how to make a reading cloth. Um, I'm just uh, tidying up from my last project. So if you see any messes or stuff where it shouldn't be, just try your best to ignore it. I'm going to get over to the cutting table. We're going to get uh, going on that. Reading cloths, the, one, the kind of reading cloths that I make are fully reversible. All the seams are fully enclosed. It's not as hard. It's a, it takes a little time, but it's not as hard as people might think it is. So I'm going to go through, do one for you, let you guys see how it's done, and then maybe you guys will be able to do one for yourselves. Okay, off we go. Okay, so we're here at the cutting table. This is going to be a pretty easy project today. I'm going to uh, show you how to make a reading cloth. Now, this is pretty simple. Just ignore the mess, guys. I just was doing a couple of other things, and I haven't got it fully cleaned up yet. Okay, so I am going to use Lisa's temper tantrum fabric. I don't know if anybody watches my wife's channel, but uh, this is uh, this is a we we had a lovely, lovely little exchange, and I ended up getting this fabric for her. So today I'm going to do this. We're going to make a. I'm going to show you how I do it. I don't do it exactly like other people do it because I just have to be different. It's my job. So. I am going to make this into a, I'm going to make a 12 by 12. I'm not going to make it super huge today. So my first step is to figure out where I want to cut it. Make a 20 by 20. That's too big. Make a 15 by 15. Okay, I'm making a 15 by 15 because the wife is in the background yelling at me. Okay, so for me, I'm lucky. I have these rulers that I get to, uh, because I do this, because I do this for a living, I have some nice fancy rulers and fancy stuff. I'm going to show you guys how to do it without the, without the fancy rulers. I'm going to put this aside. Let's hope that I don't screw it up. If you happen to have these kind of rulers, these are perfect. Um, and you'll see what I mean as I get going. So I want it to be 15 by 15. So my first step is to measure my fabric. This is already 21 inches across, so it's plenty big enough. I'm going to, for starters, this is a single direction fabric. This fabric only goes one way. That's going to matter in a few minutes, and I'll show you what to do about that. It doesn't always matter. And then I'm going to make sure, so this is already a 20 inch. I don't want to have tons and tons. This is the 15 inch mark. So I'm going to go three inches past that mark, and I'm just going to roughly, roughly, trim it up to make it, that'll, that'll just make it easier to work with. I could have left the other three inches on, not the end of my world. And that goes over to the sewing machine. Now I do buy my solid colors by the bolt. These are called, these are actually called blenders. They are nicely variegated. They're not actually solid, which is kind of nice. Now for me, this work, for me, this works out really well because again, I'm going to measure over to the 18 inch mark, cut it. So 18 inches, by the way, kids, is exactly half a meter. I mean, half a yard. So if you're, if you like what you see and you want to go out and buy material for this, then basically you'll need a half yard of each fabric, and that will make two reading cloths, or it'll make one reading cloth, and then you'll have plenty of fabric left over for any bags or stuff that you might want to make to go with it. So 18 inches. Material is, most materials are falling off the edge of the table. Most materials are about 42 inches wide. So that means when you fold them in half, they're about 21 inches. I'm just going to cut here because I already have a use for, I already have plenty of uses for this fabric. So I already know up front how to cut it. If you're, if you want to save, if you're, if you're worried about doing it right and want to save the leftovers for other projects, then yeah, go ahead and measure, go ahead and also measure this one to 18 inches. There is an advantage to making the, this a little bit longer. So now we're going to go over and enjoy this. I'm going to go iron this for you. I'm not going to torture you with the ironing, but you do want to iron both pieces with lots of steam. Okay, and never mind. I decided misery loves company. So again, my preference. This is, in theory, you're supposed to be ironing cotton with the cotton setting on your iron. I prefer the wool setting. Wool setting, lots of steam because I just want this to be nice and flat and lots of steam. It seems to me, maybe it's my imagination, but it seems to me that when I go do the wool setting with high steam, 
it just does a much better job of getting the wrinkles out. This iron isn't even nearly hot enough yet, but we'll see. See how it's still flashing? It's because I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm lazy and I, it's like it's making steam. I'm good. I'm mostly interested in the steam. That's just me though. Um, so yeah, iron it all out. I was going to do a 12 by 12. I don't know if you guys heard Lisa yelling at me in the background, but she wanted me to do 15 by 15. Whatever. She's killing herself over there because I've got the iron. I've got the camera up on the uh, ironing board. She's terrified that I'm going to knock the camera off. It's okay. Everybody's going to be seasick. No, it's not. Well, the background might move. The, this... <laughs> Don't get seasick, guys. Lisa says you guys are going to get seasick. She's over there like, if anybody has seen my wife's channel, just look up Lisa Papaz. If anybody's seen her, if you guys, if for some reason, I think most of you guys are coming over from her channel, so I don't think anybody here doesn't know who she is right now. Yeah, she's quietly having a fit over there in the corner because apparently she doesn't want me to wreck the camera. Okay, misery accomplished. We're going to go back over to the cutting table, and then we will get this stuff ready to go. Okay, so now Lisa is no longer having a heart attack now that I have this camera back onto a more solid surface. Yay! I'm gonna have to start doing this when she's not around. She's just a, she's a wreck over there. It's hilarious. Okay, we're done with the iron and we probably won't need it again until we're done. So ironing two pieces of fabric together is really simple. The pretty sides go together. It's not, that's not hard. Now, you have a couple of rules. Uh, because this is a single, I will explain as I go. I will explain as I go and we'll hope that this makes sense. Okay, so this is again, one directional fabric. And when you have a fabric that is specific, this is specific, you um, are gonna want your lines, you're gonna want your lines to, you, you're not gonna want this to be wonky. Because if, if this all of a sudden is coming out at a funky angle because you threw your ruler down funny, it's gonna look funny. So. When you, have a, when you have a single direction fabric like this or a fabric that has very clear lines, you want that to be your fabric on top. So this is the side I'm going to mark. Now, in a lot of, in a lot of, um, a lot of people will tell you to cut to your, to, your, to your desired measurement. I don't do it that way. I do this a little differently. So what I will do, because I want this to be 15 inches by 15 inches when it's finished, I'm going to measure... I'm going to keep an eye on, I don't know if you guys can see this very well. Hopefully I'll be able to zoom the camera in in a bit. Let me just drag you guys forward with me. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the design through the back of the fabric. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is pay attention to where that fabric is. And I'm going to go up the side first. This happens to have a tree in it. So I'm going to line up, I'm going to double check. That's easily 15 inches, no problem there. I'm gonna make my first line along here. And what I'm using today is a Pilot Friction Pen that, that you guys can't see. These, the pen leaves a nice mark that you can see, but a quick little blast with the iron and it disappears. So it's basically a disappearing ink. Now, I'm off. Let me just move everything over so you can see. I don't want to, I'm, I'm still learning how to screw around with the camera and I'd rather do the sewing instead of the screwing around with the camera. See, I just hit the camera. Sorry guys. Okay. Now marking on fabric, there's several things that you can use. If this was a darker fabric, so I'm going to be using the friction pen today. I can also use a chalk pencil. I'm over here making noise. Let's see what else I got. I've also got a disappearing ink, dis disappearing ink marker so that you would just uh, mark uh, this. I believe it's a chalk, so I've got that. I can also use a, instead of, I, I could use my blue chalk pencil instead of my white chalk pencil. I could do that instead. And I also have this guy. This guy is nifty. It leaves a chalk line all the way around. So you can mark your fabric. Let's mark this fabric. Let's mark this guy. So you can mark that guy. Is it showing up? I can't see it. Let me try again. Let me try again. I can see it. I'm just not sure if the camera's gonna see it. Let's see. 
those little faint lines they might not look like much on your screen but they're really visible and really obvious so you can also use one of these they literally are they're literally refillable you get little uh you get little teeny tiny bottles of uh, chalk dust or you can make your own and just drop them in blue is a really good color to use but today i'm going to use the friction mark friction pen and i'll put all that away in a bit so because this is a single direction fabric, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be careful how I line up my ruler so that everything stays nice and clean and, and straight. And I'm marking it on the fabric that I'm marking the fabric that does have the directional issues so that I can't make any mistakes. If I were to mark it on this fabric, then if anything shifts, this one's going to be the one that's off at the end. So that's what that's all about. Now I also I like to make, I like to put my backings as a, I like a, I like a colorful fabric for the front. And then I like these blenders or solid colors on the back because some people like to take photos and stuff of their readings. So they get two cloths for the price of one and the solid colors are easier to take a photo of. So I'm just making a line and I don't have to be too, I don't, I don't have to be too crazy careful about that one. And I got to get it all back on the, I got to get it all back over here. Now the beauty of it is that this line isn't going anywhere until I, this, this line that I just put in, what I like about these markers, like, okay, like the chalk, the chalk showed up really well, but if you rub it or have to set it aside for a while and the chalk rubs off, the line disappears. So the next mark, I moved everything and now you can't see again. There we go. So just line up your ruler. These rulers have grids on them. Line up the grid of your ruler. Double check, smash things around a bit, that makes it fun. Yeah, this is gonna easily be 15, no problem. Double check, line up your ruler. So what, what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be make, uh, obviously do the math. Um, I'm, I'm using my three inch line here. I want it to be 15, so I'm gonna be going over here, but take your time and be careful. You do not want, you do not want your fabric, you, look, the fabric can move around quite a bit while you're working with it, just take your time, do small lines, take your time, do, if you, you're gonna drag everything off center on you. And what we're also gonna do, so 15 plus one, two, three is 18. We're gonna come to the 18 line, but we're going to 18 and a half. Because things, when you flip it inside out, which you will be doing at a later point, when you flip this inside out, you're going to um, have things shift and move, and it's just what they do. You always want to be a tiny bit over. I'll stop over explaining it and just tell you, you always want it to be a tiny bit over. Now, when I just before I, I, I did a little pencil tick at my, um, at my 15 and a half inch point. So now we're gonna go over here to 18 and a half inches. We, I'm using my three inch line. This might seem really, really obvious, but when, you're, when you get going and you're like, okay, I need 15 inches, it's really easy to stop at the 15 inch line and just kind of get distracted and lose track of, of, of where you are. So it's a nice little double check for yourself to do that. So see, I'm just kind of like, I don't, I don't mind going over multiple times because I already know that the iron is going to get rid of this and I've already tested it. Some fabrics are worse than others when it comes to, um, some fabrics are worse than others when it comes to being stained by these um, pencils. So you do always want to check. So for this one here, I'm going to go back to my three inch line because I'm lining up this entire section of the ruler this, 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 if you have the wider rulers like this, it means a lot less work for you. If you have a narrower ruler, then you have to like, then, okay, if you're working with a narrower ruler, say your ruler is only two inches wide, then you're gonna go little mark, little mark, little mark, little mark, and then you're gonna go like this and go, is that, is that 15 and a half? Yes, it, well, you'll do it from this side. Is that 15 and a half? Yes, it is. Is that 15 and a half? Yes, it is. And then you'll come back just like you learn in school, just like you learn in school, just mark it as you go, just do little marks, double check your distances, and then come back and do it this way later. I don't have, I actually don't have any narrower rulers, so, 
And I want this one to be just a little bit darker because I can. And again, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just kind of back and forth, back and forth. Everybody has their own system. Obviously, you'll figure out yours. Just make sure that you are not dragging your fabric. Because look, you can drag your fabric really easy with this. Okay, now, we are, re we are almost, we are ready to start sewing this guy. Let's get some of my crap out of the way. Put it over there. Wander off for a minute, get my pins. Let's go get some pins. Okay, now, I'm gonna switch, the, I'm gonna flip this back around. I'm gonna tell you a couple of secrets as I go. Here's some secrets. This is why the, his number one secret, if you're using chalk, you cannot rub your hands over it because you'll just wipe the chalk right back off again. So if you are using chalk, I'm doing things in reverse because of the pen that I'm using. If you do this and just ever so lightly, notice how I'm not pushing, I'm just, I'm just going like this, taking my time because these two fabrics will kind of stick together a little bit. I don't know how to describe it, but they'll just, and then you're also making sure that there's no lines, no whatever, no kinks, creases. If you take your time and something's creased, you can usually, if you take your time, you can usually feel it. Just play princess in the pea, okay? Now, we have to leave a hole to turn this. So the two spot, the two, the, there's a couple of rules. Okay, so this is the upright. This is, this is upright, that way. This is gonna be the bottom of your reading cloth. Now you can also use these as, okay, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna get repetitive for a second. If, okay, say you're just, say you've got blue and black, then it doesn't matter where you start anything. Um, your, the rules change. These are the rules if you have a directional fabric or a fabric with specific features that you need to show up in a certain way. So you're going to be choosing your thread. You, want, you do not want to have your opening along the bottom if you're, if you're, if this is going to have, this is going to have a bottom because you're going to put this down so that you can look at it upside right. And then if there is any issues with the, with this, sometimes when you flip it, there'll be a little spot and there'll be a little tiny, it, it's not a big deal. Nobody ever sees it. Nobody ever notices it unless it's right up their nose. Don't put it up their nose. It's, you're going to be looking at your fabric from here if you use a directional fabric. So you want it to be Sometimes putting it at the top works, usually putting it on one side or the other works. And so I usually try and put it about two thirds of the way up on the left hand side or on the right side, it doesn't matter. But I try and, I try and figure out what's gonna be the bottom. If there's gonna be a bottom, where's the bottom? And put it up here. Never do it from the corner down, from the corner down. Never do it from the corner. Because then when you have to turn your fabric later, that particular corner is going to look really weird compared to the rest. Just, just trust me on this. So give yourself two or three inches of space. Give yourself two or three inches. Uh, the, the, bigger the, the bigger the piece is, the bigger your hole is going to be. I think we can do it with about three inch holes. So I'm going to put a pin here. I'm going to put a pin here. That's about where my hole is going to be. Okay. Now... I am going to pin the corners. Don't be don't be afraid to like just be make it your make it your mantra to just lightly tap everything into place. Let's say that something shifts, right? Let's say that this is shifted. I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it really obvious. Let's say that that's shifted. If I'm doing this as I go, I will find it. I will find it, and I won't have to try too hard to find it. So put it in, smooth it. Put it put the so pin smooth, pin smooth because you really want this to be smooth. And again, see, I kind of mucking it up a little bit, shifted some things around. This is not difficult. It really isn't. This, these are not difficult to make, but they are, you have to take your time. You have to be careful. I like to go over and do the next corner, do the middle. Depending on how, depending on how, now if, if you, and again, like I've said in previous, videos, the two previous videos that I've made so far. My third video, guys. Okay. If you feel like you need a pin every inch, put a pin in every inch. This is, 
you, I don't, you know, what other people think you should be doing is irrelevant. It's, it's what makes you feel the most successful. So I'm going to turn it just so that you guys can see what I'm doing. You don't usually have to turn it, fluff it around. Just give it a little, a little, a little thing. Next corner. Go into the center. La la la. Next third. Again, just double check. Like I said, if something if something has shifted, then when you go to this corner, that will start to crimp up. It'll start to like crease up like that big exaggerated example I did. It'll start to do that near the corner. Okay, last one. Again, you do not have to flip them around. I'm just doing this to I'm just doing this so that you guys are stuck keeping me company while I do it. <laughs> okay. Now we're done. We're done pinning. We're done pinning. We have clarified that we want our opening to be on. Well, I've got two spots. I got that. You can either put it there or there's another spot onto the camera. We go over here, but we do not want it because this is directional. Like I said, if these were two solid colors and you just pick a spot. And if this has, if something happens, people can just turn it away. You will expect that. Okay. I'll show you when I get over to the sewing machine. We're almost over there now. So I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on once I get settled in over there. So I just dragged it over here, fought with my machine a bit, get some, get the right color thread on it. Now I am using a dark blue thread. You'll actually be able to see it go. You'll actually be able to see it pretty good. I'm not killing. Okay. This, this is just basting. Basically, a basting stitch is we're going to baste all the way around here so that everything holds together when I flip it around to actually finish it. So on a basting stitch, I'm going to do my stitches. I'm going to do my stitches three and a half millimeters apart. Now, if you are doing one of these by hand, you can have your stitches. Honestly, just make sure a stitch gets into each corner and you can just... It, it, you'll see what I mean as I go. I don't know how to explain it for hand stitching, but you can hand stitch this. These stitches are going to be three and a half millimeters. I'm only going to, I'm only going to back stitch once. And then I'm just going to go. Going to get to the corner, take out the pins as you go. Go to the corner. Stop with the pin down. Stop with the pin down because then you can just, I have a knee lift over here. I get, I get lucky. I got, this is a nice, this is my, this is a nice fun toy to play with. Now, if this isn't centered completely, which this isn't, most machines, even the, even the little, even the little cheapies, bring it up, roll it up by hand or use your little uh, up down button, lift it ever so slightly, center it. It's not the end of your world if it's not hundred percent centered. Um, I'm putting this in the Etsy shop, so I need it centered. Um, go around, technically you can go over the pins, but if you hit one, you're breaking a needle. So I don't recommend it. And that line that you made, just stitch right along it. This is uh, a great way to get a really precise product. Um, usually what they'll do is tell you to go a quarter inch. Usually they'll tell you to cut a quarter inch past where you want it to be and then just line everything up and sew it, which is fine. I find this to be faster. Um, then again, when I'm doing these, I'm normally doing like, you know, nine or 10 at a time. So, um, having them pre-marked and ready to go where I can just grab it, follow the line and don't have to think about it just feels easier for me. I don't know if it's faster, but it feels like that to me. Um, but this is how I do it. If you're sewing, I mean, I can do it the other way, uh, but oh, that one is right on the, right in the center. So just pick up your foot. You can move stuff around quite a bit. Just watch the needle. If you're, if you're, if you're like reefing and that needle is shifting around all over the place, shifting around all over the place. Wow. This camera doesn't want to focus for me today. Um, then yeah, you, you're, you're, you're going to have a problem, but as long as you're moving carefully and smoothly with smooth motions, um, lift things up while the needle is down, position your fabric, keep going.
And again, if you're doing this by if you're doing this by hand, um, you're just tacking it down enough so that you can flip the fabric over. I'll show you what that looks like. If you see anything really obvious, if you see anything really obvious sticking to the outside, make sure you just grab it right quick because once you flip everything, anything that's stuck here is going to be on the inside afterwards. Take your pin out, get to your edge. Keep going. Okay, I don't, you guys can't really see it from here, but I kind of hold my fabric back here a little bit. Remember that rule that they tell you when, you, when, they, when you're learning to drive, they tell you don't look at the road exactly ahead of your vehicle, look a little bit ahead. So I kind of like hold it here. I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling anything. I'm just holding it and I'm kind of hold it back here. It just, when you're sewing up here and doing it like this, lines going off center is actually like it just feels like you're struggling it feels like everything's just a, it feels like everything's on the verge of going where it's not supposed to go if you come back here you can have some, something beeped if, if you if you come back here a little bit you just feel like you have a little bit more control and you do not want sudden sharp if something starts to go off a tiny bit you want it to go back on smoothly you don't want to go jog 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 because that'll just make it look weird. <laughs> and something that most sewing machines have, if you have an older machine, you might not have this, uh, this might not be something that you can do. Most newer machines, you can control your speed with the pedal. Um, and again, if you have a machine, I mean, I don't know how old a machine has to be before you don't have speed control, but just to say it, some people are using machines that they've had since they're, you know, that they got from their parents. So if you're using an older machine and don't have speed control, um, it could be worth considering. Because this machine goes about, goes a lot faster than what I'm going right now. But I want to make sure I stay on the line. Okay, so I'm at the pin. Pull it out. Go forward one, go back one, back one. There we go. Done. I'm done. You do want to trim these, but it's not the end of your world if you don't trim them perfectly because this is going to become the inside. Let's trim your threads. Now, um, let's see if I can... You've got a couple of choices. You can just use a pair of scissors. See, there you go. Nice straight line following the edge. We are going to head back over to the other table. I'll show you how to get this ready to turn it. It's not a big deal. It's mostly me talking at this point. So let's go. Okay, we're back over at the table. Now, this is pretty simple. Um, I'm not even sure if you guys are going to see it right. Maybe you guys are just going to be hearing me talk while I do the work. I haven't, I can't tell the camera. Camera viewfinder is pretty small. Yep, I'm not, you're not going to be able to see anything. There we go. Okay, this is pretty simple. So you line up your ruler. You line up your ruler and just cut. So your ruler, you line it up on the line that you just stitched. Um, just make sure that you take your time. Hold this down. There you go. So you want to trim this to a quarter inch all the way around. You can trim it with scissors. There's no rules on that. Just try to make sure that, and if you're not comfortable, trim it to half an inch. If you're not, if you're really not comfortable, trim it to an inch. It's your, this is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. I trimmed them to, a, I trimmed them to a quarter inch all the way around. La, 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 la. I mean, honestly, I just brought you guys over to watch me do something for like four seconds. This, this doesn't take long. Um, and like I said, if you're going to trim them by hand, just make sure you got a pair of sharp scissors. Make sure you take your time. Don't cut, don't cut past this line. That line that you sewed in, don't cut past that line or you, or you will have to come back because if you go onto the inside, then obviously you're going to end up having, it's going to be a hole. Now, last one. 
I'll trim off the corners in a second and we'll go back over there and I'm back. Okay, you guys not, would not believe the pile of junk that I have got just outside of the camera range here. Okay, so the next step is actually simple. I could have done it over there. I want to show you guys over here. Okay, so for the next step, I have a, I have a little feels about this. Now, what they, what, what they say, my, my uh, pen marks are still there because I'll just give this... These pen marks will come off with just steam. If you don't have a steam, heat, heat takes them off. If you don't have steam, um, for starters, wait till you're done because this, these might not be visible at all anyway, but just hold it up over a little bit of steam from a kettle or something. Now what they say is, there it is. What they say is to come in here and cut. And what a lot of them, what a lot of, what a lot of people will tell you is to cut as close to that as, as close to that without cutting the stitch, the thread, the thread is right there. As close to the thread as you can without cutting the thread. I like to leave a little tiny bit more about, probably about an eighth of an inch, probably less than an eighth of an inch. Um, because this is the way that, the way that these cloths finish, you don't want that to start, you don't want that corner to start fraying. Um, that's just my preference, but it is not the end of the world one way or the other. If you want to trim right down to the stitch, then that's fine. But if you don't want to trim that, if you don't want to trim super close, if you're worried about it creating a spot, I mean, for me, I, the way that I, the way that I do this, um, and because I'm asking people to give me money for this, I want to make sure that these corners will never, um, get uh, wear and tear and start opening at the corner. So I leave a little bit extra there. So turning it inside out. You don't need to be able to stick your whole hand in there. I just stick my, the, I just stick my thumb in, go to the first corner. There are tons of tools for popping your corners to get really sharp corners. You can opt to just not care if you get a sharp corner. Um, it's entirely up to you. I would say for your first couple of projects, do it as best you can, but don't agonize whether or not your corners are super sharp. Where is the next one? There's the next one find the corner. I just get one, I get one, I get, I get my thumb on the inside, my fingernail on the outside, flip it through. It sounds complicated, but the first couple of times you do it, I think you'll see exactly what I mean. Take your time. The trick with, the trick with flipping this stuff out is to do all this shit and try not to stretch the hole. Try not to stretch the hole because then you are going to, um, end up with, that's, that's when it ends up looking really wonky is if you stretch the hole too much. So here comes some loud noises. I like to just smack it on things. There you go, it's done. Now you have two choices. You could, if you want to look up something called a ladder stitch, you could at this point in time, fill this with batting, with, fill this with stuffing, do a ladder stitch where the hole is. A ladder stitch lets you close up a ladder stitch lets you close up this hole without leaving any stitches on the outside. If you decide that you want to fill this with stuffing and make it into a pillow, now is when you start putting the stuffing in and then you go look up a ladder stitch. It's a, it's a, it's hand sewing. Look up a ladder stitch and just fill it. If you're intending to make a pillow, then that basting stitch that we just did, um, make sure those stitches are closer together. Um, so that things, because obviously if you do a, if you do a basting stitch and then stuff it, it'll be, so I probably should have talked, I, should, I probably should have mentioned that like 15 minutes ago, but anyway, so that's it. This is now a reading cloth. You just finger press. Don't go crazy. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hopefully, I'm going to hopefully get this mostly set up while I'm, so if you take this, put your pinky here, put your pinky here. That's the hole. That's the hole. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can do this. Tug without pulling. That's hard. Okay. So you want to put some pressure, but are you seeing how, okay, see how it's open and see how it just wants to go flat. It wants to go where you want it. So you've got, you're pinching it down with this pinky. You're pinching it down with this pinky. There's other ways to do this. This is just what I do. And then you've got the rest of your fingers free to wiggle and jiggle. Get it where you, get it where you want it. Wiggle and jiggle, wiggle and jiggle until when you're done, you have a line that you can't see. Um, 
that takes practice. Now, if you are, if you are, if you are holding this and going, oh my God, it worked. This is where, if you've never done one of these before and are still practicing and learning, this is where it's in your best interest to go on over to the iron, give it a good iron or to get it down here and give it a good, I don't know how to describe this. I don't know how to describe finger pressing. I never, I, I see other people describing it. You want to press it down with your fingertips without stretching, without pushing, without, without um, stretching the fabric. So give it a good finger press. And if you're not confident, give it, if you're not, if you're, if you're, if you're not confident in your finger press, if you're, if you're worried it's going to shift. Now, once it's finger pressed down, go pin it there, pin it there. Where's the other end of that guy? Pin it there so it doesn't shift. Pin it closed over to the machine. So this part is done. Let us get back to the machine, which is four inches away. So here we go. We've got this zoomed in. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Now, if you, so here's our opening. Here's a, here's a couple pins with my opening. Uh, opening starts about there. So we are gonna go about an inch above the opening. I'm gonna grab this over here. Now, if you're gonna do a straight stitch, then you want to go, you ideally, if you can, do a quarter inch if that's what's comfortable for you. But if, if you can, and with practice, try to do one eighth inch, stay really close to the outside edge. And you want these stitches to be closer together to, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, go, if you're gonna do a straight stitch all around, do two millimeters, um, 1.8, something like that. Get them, get them nice and close together so that you don't have to agonize. I'm gonna do the fancy stitch because I always do a fancy stitch. It's what I do. Uh, so I am lining this up inside of each foot. Let me get a foot for you. There's a, is there a foot? Is there a foot? I have crap everywhere here. Okay. Inside of each foot doo -doo 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 -doo, is a little half moon shape. That is the amount of space that the pin can go into. The pin cannot go outside of that space. So what I do is I line up the outside of the fabric with one edge. I don't go to here. I line it up with here. Um, now, depending on what stitch you choose, you may want to go a tiny bit over. This is a practice thing. You'll get that in time. But keep in mind that if you want to get really close to the edge, then it's this hole that you're lining up with the edge, not the foot. So your foot, if you, like I said, if you're trying to get close to the edge, then you're, the size and shape of your foot doesn't matter. It's the size and shape of that hole. Um, and that's in case it matters to you. Obviously, if this is your first time, if, if you're watching this for the first time and you're going to go make a reading cloth, do what works for you. Um, I'm just showing you what has been working for me. Um, and that's what I'm all about today. Because my channel, I can do what I want. <laughs> She's over there laughing. It's like, oh my God. That's my line. My channel, I can do what I want. Oh, is that what you say? Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't, I just, okay, I, I'm, I've been getting, I've been, I've been absorbing your stuff. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to do, what do I want to do? Well, it's got lots of leaves on it, so I'll do a leafy pattern. I, it's a bigger cloth, so I am going to use a full, I'm going to use a full size. You can, um, almost every machine will let you adjust the size of your, of your, even, even this stuff, almost every machine will let you adjust all kinds of things with the size and shape of these. If you've got a machine that has the fancy patterns on it, take some time, take some scrap, just brr, 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 unscrap. So we are going to get started. This is do not backstitch at this point. I'll show you why in a minute. Hold this down. Uh, I, I need to hold this down on this. Just get your first couple of stitches in. That'll, that'll keep that. Sometimes, every now and again, these tails get sucked under the machine. Um, I picked, I picked a uh, darker blue because it'll match this on the back. Okay, so this has already been lined up and pinned. So we are good to go here. Everything is nice and steady. So I'm just gonna go to here. I'm just using a nice little loopy loop. Looks a, it looks a little like leaves. Okay, take the first pin out. I find it helpful 
when you're closing up this hole, I find it helpful to keep going right up to the pins actually kind of close. Um, and again, that's just me. That is just me and what I do. But again, I'm selling these. I'm selling these on my Etsy shop. I'm going to link it below. I forgot to in the last couple of videos, so we'll see. But I'm going to link the shop below in case anybody cares, wants to take a look. This is actually going to go up this, well, this will go up this week or next week. I don't know. Okay, now we just go. I have a knee lift. It's a cute little, it's a, I have a cute little knee lift on the side, on the side of the machine here. It's actually really, really helpful. But if you're, if you accidentally hit it, then the machine yells at you and won't stitch until you fix it. Okay, so we did not backstitch here, right? Remember, remember how we didn't backstitch when we got started? So just to make sure I don't forget while everything is still nice and, uh, Make it in. Yeah, that's right. Every now and again, the first two or three stitches can be a bit of a mess. Some machines are just notorious for it. Others aren't. So if that's your machine, then every now and again, every, like if, I, if I'm using one of the other machines, every now and again, I'll get started and I'll actually have to pick out the first two or three stitches. Don't worry about if you have to do that. It's kind of normal. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. This is a finishing stitch that's going to be visible all the way around. So you're going to be a little bit more picky. It's not, it's not like I'm going to fold this up and start and start sewing things together. So we're just going to go now. There's a couple of things that are going to help, I hope. And then again, if nothing's going to help, then just turn off the volume, turn on your favorite music, just enjoy the uh, visual. Now, we're closing in on a corner and everything's in line here. As we get close to the corner, stop, stop before you get to your corner. Now, this is really important. This is why I don't have to pin or iron and can just go. So now that I'm getting close to the corner here, I'm going to come out here to about here and I'm just going to turn that. I'm going to, I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to open this up a little bit. I don't know if I can show you this, the cam, I haven't got very good lighting today and I'm not sure why I'll have to fix that later, but just get this opened up, pinch it a little bit, pinch it a little bit and just push and pull and take your time. Finger press it. D finger press trying not to stretch things. And you'll get you'll get the hang of it. Trust me. I thought I was never going to get the hang. Oh, finger pr finger press, but don't stretch your fabric. I thought I was never going to get the hang of it. Um, it's not. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. The first time you do it right, you're going to go. You're going to go. Oh, and then you won't have a problem after that. Okay, get into the corner. Get into the corner. We have options. I personally. Now you can just sew right off the end, cut your thread, turn your fabric, and then start again. I don't like doing that. There's a bunch of reasons for this. So I come up here and I turn my fabric. Okay. I double check. Is it still, I got lucky. I actually got lucky. Is it still lined up with this the way it needs to be? And it actually is. I got, you'll get the hang of that too. And you can, now you can go back and forth. Look, oh, I need one more stitch. Oh, I'm good to go. Slow down, take your time, double check at your corner, get your first little bit started so that it's uh, ready to go. Don't worry about the rest, I'll show you that in a second. Now, this is the part that matters. When you were at the corner, this is where I'm gonna get tedious here. Okay, so let's grab some scrap. Let's grab some scrap and show you guys some shit. Let me take a piece of scrap, I'm gonna show you guys this. When you take a piece of fabric, and you fold it and sew it, you now have two pieces of fabric. With this, what we've done is we've taken this side and folded it. We've taken this side and folded it. So there are those two pieces of fabric and two pieces of fabric. I'm not even gonna be able to do this right. Fold it over on itself, because that's, that's basically what this is. Basically what this is, is two pieces, is, what this is is two pieces of, one piece has been folded in half, the other piece has been folded in half, and they've been folded onto themselves and now you actually have, I don't know if you can see that, four pieces of fabric. Look at that. Outside, inside, inside, outside. You've got four pieces of fabric. Now that forms a lump. That little tiny lump doesn't really matter all that much unless you're trying to make it do shit. So what you're trying to do is go from this, is this, 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 from here out is four layers of fabric. This is four layers of fabric. You're trying to turn 
with a lot of fabric under you. And don't forget, the very corner has also got the extra bulk rolled in from the corner. It's hard to describe, and, and if you, if you, you, it's hard to describe, but that extra bulk can add a little bit more lumpiness to the corners. So if you just start trying to sew from here, there's a really good chance that your fabric is just gonna sit there and not move. And then you go, da, 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 and suddenly you've got like 85 layers of stitching. This can happen, it's, it's an even higher chance of it happening if you go off the end, then start again. So what I do is you've either got a button on the machine that just automatically raises your needle, or you can do it manually. So I go, I raise my needle, I go ever so slightly forward, I bring my needle back down, put in a stitch. Come ever so slightly forward, put my needle down, bring in a stitch. Make sure that that lump, now I can feel it because I'm used to this. Make sure that that lump, I, I, literally, need a, I, literally, I literally need a microscope to show you. See the, see the opening of this? Make sure that that lump is behind that opening. Once that gets that far forward, so back down, I'm gonna go a little bit further. You can literally, like so, especially, okay, so you don't have to move it forward a lot. You don't, it, you're barely moving it. Um, sometimes, so you're just makes, you're basically just making sure that the existing stitch pattern is continuing to move forward. And then once this, once my little lump, I can feel the edge of it is right there. My hole for my stitches is right there on the back. Remember I, I showed the, I showed you the thing. This sounds super freaking tedious. And the first few times you do it, it's going to feel super tedious. Once you get used to it, you, once you get used to it, I'm spending more time explaining this than I would normally spend doing it. Once you get back there, press, put your finger there. By now you've already know which way these are gonna go and then just start if you're, and now put your first, so start moving normally again. Make sure that it's moving properly. If it looks like two stitch, if it looks like it's not moving properly, do a few more manual stitches. And then get everything lined up and then just continue. Now, this part is, this part, let me just bring you with, let's bring you with me. There we go, okay. So now you want all of this, you want all of that blue to the back, you want all of that green to the front. You don't want these colors showing front and back. You want a nice clean, you want a nice clean fold right there where the where when you're on this side you don't see the blue, when you're on this side you don't see the, look, you don't see the green. Okay. So if you start pinching and folding all the way up here at the needle, your hands are going to be so sore. It's weird. It's really okay, it's not weird. This because you're you're only doing a millimeter at a time and you're overworking it. But if you come all the way back to here, let's do this where my fingers are still. Come back here, pinch that piece, pinch that little bit into space into place. Grab your grab your stuff. Give it a little tiny tug. Little tugs. Little tugs. Nothing nothing too insane because you don't want to stretch the fabric. Press it down. Now look at that. You can't see it, right? Move it over. You can't see it on the back. When you come back a little bit and then do the little tugs, the little light tugs, this stuff wants to fall into, pl into place for the most part. And then what you can do is you can pinch over here off to the side, tug your top into place, get underneath, get underneath, grab a little pinch of, you may even want to just separate them before you start working on it. But yeah, just take your time, pinch and tug and move around, but do it from back here and you'll get a bigger section. Again, difficult to describe, but once you get it the first time, you're gonna go, oh. And go. As you get to the next uh, fabric that has not been um, put into place yet, I still, I'm stopping about an inch or two before, I, this is where I pinched and tugged, I'm stopping about an inch or two before that, Come back further, grab it again. I'm pulling over on this side a little bit. Just little tugs, little tugs, little motions. This is, the funny thing is, is if you're like grabbing and pulling really hard, you'll actually like, you won't do yourself any favors. You'll actually make it worse. It's really, it's really hard to describe. And then just finger press lightly, double check if you need to. Sometimes it's best, 
For the first few projects, it's best to decide which one is gonna be mostly the front and which one is only gonna be used occasionally. Um, like these are two-sided because a lot of people like to do their readings on this side, but if they wanna take photos, then they can do it on this side because this will be, this is a more photographic, photogenic, well, I guess it depends on what, I guess it depends on what you're doing. I've had people buy these for um, wedding decor. I've had people buy these as um, tablecloths. Obviously the shop is tarot related, but when it comes to these particular cloths, the sky is the limit on what you can use them for. Once you get a little bit of practice, the two things to practice are bringing, are doing this. Every now and again, a piece, every now and again, a section wants to be stubborn. Just take your time with it. And you go like that, you just kind of do whatever you feel like is going to work for you. Everybody has their own little system. Like Rose does this differently. Rose, Rose comes over and helps me three times a week. Make sure I have lots of stuff for the shop. Rose does it a little bit differently than I do. And hers are just as nice as mine. So there's no issues that way. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the feel that you're going for though. Um, and if you, like I said, if you're, if you're constantly pinching and tugging, you can also, you can also like, you know, use a pair, use a pair of tweezers. Tweezers are amazing. Tweezers are an amazing, um, sewing tool. They really are there every now and again, especially if, um, like if I'm doing, if I'm doing projects that have a lot of pinching and a lot of fine pinching and pulling work and stuff like that on them. Um, my hands can get really sore after a while. And I mean like really sore, like just go take a break and some Tylenol sore. Um, okay, close to the corner. I already know that I'm not, oh, I did it again. I got lucky. Okay, now I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, deal with the corner on this one because I could already tell that the, one, that the corner had already fallen into place on its own. So just take your time. Something that will sometimes something that will sometimes happen is this will end up getting folded deeper inside, like like that. I don't know how to describe it. It'll get folded really deep inside, so it's got a really deep crease. I'm not sure if the camera even picked that up. So that might be something to do. Maybe that's something to do on a day when Lisa can help us. We can close up and we can we can do close up stuff and go through all the troubleshooting things. So again, I'm just pulling this over. This one it seems to want to let a little bit of blue show up, so I'm going under, I'm putting my hand underneath, pinching the blue, and just giving it a slight tug. I'm on my corner, so I'm gonna go up, ever so slightly forward, back down, back up. Yeah, it didn't go forward, so go down, go back up. It's starting to move forward, it seems to want to move forward up. Yeah, it's moving forward on its own now. There we go. So the corner's gonna look a little messy. They always, uh, well, this one's not bad. This one's not bad. That's what the, let me see. There's a stitching in the corner. It's hard to see because obviously I try to do the, um, I try to do matching threads. So the corner's always gonna look a little weird, but the only, op the only other alternative is, like I said, to sew off the end and then start sewing, then, then turn it, then start all over again. And it's going to look just as weird, and you're going to have all kinds of extra thread that you need to trim off at the end. So you have to pick your poison. Now, I will say, if you're doing this by hand, if anybody is hand sewing this, there are plenty of really awesome stitches that you can do. And because you're sewing by hand using needle and thread, then you're going to be able to make your corners perfect every time. Um, you'll still want to pinch everything out the same way. If, you, if you're sewing by hand, I would say pinch everything out, give it a quick iron, and then um, sew it. But, yep, we are... Now it's just a matter of finishing it. We are about, we're a little over half done. We're a little over half done on this. I think I'm going to stop talking now, just let you guys enjoy the, uh, maybe I'll ask Lisa to do a fancy music effect and then we'll just do the last little bit either in real time or speed it up, I don't know.
Okay, guys, and we are almost done. This is the first stitch that we did. Now, remember, we didn't backstitch here, and now you're going to see why. So we did not backstitch. We've already trimmed everything off right from the very beginning so we couldn't screw it up. And we are going to go and just loop around the existing stitches. We are not backstitching here either. And we're done. So I just have to trim that. My batteries are flashing. Let's see how much more of this I can get. So that is done. So the last, the last little bit, you're going to have a little double stitch close together. Not the end of your world. You don't have to care. And there you have it, guys, a finished reverse, reversible. I can't say reversible, but that's fine. A finished, fully reversible tablecloth, tarot cloth, altar cloth. Um, I'm not even sure what all you would use these for. They've got a ton of uses. You can... Uh, Make them bigger, smaller. This is the basic. Uh, this is the basic technique, and the size really is just up to you. Anyway, I hope you guys learned how to do it. I hope it's helpful information at the very least. I hope it was entertaining if it wasn't helpful. And with that, I am gonna say goodbye. Thank you for watching. You guys have a great day. And like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to see more because I do plan on making more of these. And I will see you next time. Bye.